My sixth birthday, my mom down down to get me a bike and the track and I really liked it. One day we stopped by and uh, saw some racing and thought it would be fun and tried it. Uh, it's a good family sport and we love it. You make new friends as the tracks become bigger. Good luck, dear. I want a first place. I like it because it's an individual sport and they achieve what they're capable of doing and uh, there's no politics. It's, you do it yourself. Never stop pedaling. Rear wheel on the ground, pull up at the triple. And don't you ever give up. You get out there and you get them because they're not better than you. You know, you got it physically and mentally out there. If you're a little, little slow on either one, it could definitely make a change on your racing. I know how to clean bikes. That's one thing I definitely know how to do. You will finish very hard. Right? Okay. And don't keep up. Okay? If you fall down, you get up right away and keep on pedaling. You know, you can start at the local elite level, you know, just racing for mom and dad, and then he builds himself up in the bike shop team, and then if he's good enough, build himself up in, you know, a factory team, and uh, it can really take him far. I've been to take me to Australia, New Zealand, I've raced, like, in North Carolina and all over the world. Eleven, Butler, number 12, Worshick, and number 7, Garcia, 7 is Garcia. BMX is a great sport because of the camaraderie to uh, just be out there doing something for yourself that you can be proud of. The excitement, the track, the, uh, the will to want to get out there and win. Right is ready, watch fight! Awesome! The complete video of BMX Racing. We'll show you how to get started and how to stay in the lead with tips from the pros. With your host, the nation's most radical race announcer, Lenny Batiki. Totally awesome. That's what BMX is. Bicycle motocross. I'm Lenny Batiki, the voice of BMX. With me for this video will be five-time national champion Stu Thompson. Lenny, it's a pleasure to be here. Stu, it's great to have you here. You know, we'll be talking to kids that may already be involved in BMX or may have just always wanted to become BMX racers. And that's what Totally Awesome's all about. Show you how you can get involved with BMX, what BMX is, and how you can excel at it. Stu, you're the master. You dominated this sport for almost 10 years. What are some of the ways you're going to take these future radsters and make them totally awesome? Well, in this video, we're going to show you some of the better riding techniques 
We're going to show you how to get out of the gate. We're going to show you how to take proper jumps. We're going to tell you how to go through corners the fastest. We're going to get into equipment, bicycles, sizing for you, and some of the accessories for each one of these bikes. We're going to show you some of the exercises to do so you can be in top-notch form for the races. We're going to get into some nutrition, show you what to eat to perform best for the races. Then we're going to get into safety because that's the best part of all, safety. We're going to show you how to prepare your bike and your body for racing. What do you say we get going, Lenny? Let's go to where it all starts, the BMX starting gate. The most important part of the race is a good start out of the gate. The first thing to learn in a gate is how to maintain your balance. You can learn to practice your balance at home by putting your front wheel up against the wall or a curb. This will help you maintain the balance while you're in the gate. The position of the body is essential to a good start. The crank should be horizontal to the ground, the body over the center of the bike. Lean forward and pedal as the gate drops. Let's take another look at the start from both the front and side view. The crank should be parallel with the ground, body over the center of the bike. Lean forward and pedal as you come out of the gate. And let's see the proper way to take those again. Timing is very important. Listen to the cadence of the starter. Going too early will ruin your chances of winning. Gates begin the race and a bad start could end it for you. I'll be back later to talk about jumps. In our first equipment section, we have some of the basics to go over. So we've got an expert, the owner and president of Titan Incorporated, Bob Furry. Bob, what are you going to tell the beginners about shopping and buying BMX parts? Well, they're going to run into a number of things uh, when they're out there, Lenny. The, uh, probably the first thing and the, and the most puzzling is going to be the, the cost factors. They're going to start going to their local bicycle shops, and they're going to find that they're going to run into price ranges from anywhere from $69 to over $1,000. Well, wouldn't the $1,000 one be the best way to go? No, it, for a beginner, it really wouldn't be. The, the person hasn't maybe made the total commitment yet. The things they should be concerned about when they're out looking to see what prospective equipment they may want to get is safety. They want to look and make sure that the equipment they're looking at has been designed for BMX racing so it can take the stress. There's going to be no problems with it. The second thing is that they want to be concerned with standards. Make sure that what they are buying has the industry standards so that if they need to change parts, add components later, they will not run into problems. Uh, the third thing is go to more than just one shop, Lenny. They should be going to a number of shops and talking to and get, getting different opinions from each shop owner. Well, this here looks like a bike shop, Bob. We've got a couple bikes here in front of us. Tell me something about the different sizes that uh, we have in front of us. Well, what, we, what we've done here is we, we've brought in two bikes to show you the difference between the 20-inch size uh, that is required by the wheels and the 24-inch size, not mainly referred to as a cruiser. Well, is, is there uh, racing in both these sizes? Yes, yes. Any of the racers that uh, they've seen today so far has the ability to ride both the 20 and the 24. It's merely a preference as to which one they want to race or both together. Well, if I walk into a bike shop and I want to ride this size, which I imagine is the 20-inch size, do I just tell them, put me on a 20, and they'll know what to do? How does that work? 
No, uh, again, once a, a rider has decided, you know, what size of a bicycle they'd like to, to race, whether it be a 20-inch in the 20-inch class or a 24, they then can go in and they can either design and create their own bicycle through component uh, selection, which is selecting individual parts, or buying a bike in a kit form. And again, I would recommend to beginners uh, and, and people that are just starting to race to go ahead and use a kit uh, bicycle. These are manufactured by uh, reputable BMX manufacturers that uh, have assembled good quality components, and it keeps the price down. Sounds pretty easy to me, Bob. Well, it, it really isn't just that easy. One thing you got to remember is we're talking about a sport with a complete size spectrum. We're talking about uh, the uh, riders from six on up. We have here a selection of frames, and I brought these in to try to show you the differences in a frame, something that the... Uh, the rider should be looking for. A younger rider is going to want a shorter top tube so that they actually fit the bike better. And you can see that there is a difference in top tube selections here as well as here. The other thing is the seat post size because a younger, shorter rider also is going to need a sh shorter seat. What are some of the specifics a beginner should know about sizing? Well, some of the, the things that we should know, we've created a chart to show so that they can go out and make a correct frame selection so it'll help in their performance out on the track racing. Let's take a look at that chart. If you'll notice on our sizing chart, why we've basically broken the different frames up into five groups, a micro through a pro. Uh, the way you can use this chart is let's say that you're a rider between three foot ten and four foot four. You would look on the chart and you can see where it says you should be looking or shopping for a mini frame. Uh, that mini frame can of manufacturers but it's going to have a top tube length of being 14 and a half and 16 inches. And if you buy a frame in that size, then it's going to be fitting you properly. Sounds great, Bob. But how does a rider benefit from being on the correct size bike? Okay. Let's, let's use Scott here. Let's look, for instance. If, if you notice BMX frames, they basically have been designed with a short rear end, keeping the wheel tucked up underneath them and then, the, and then the front end appropriately designed with the length of the top tube. The position Scott is in now is a correct position for racing a BMX bike. Yes, he's going to be out of the saddle, he's going to be cranking, but he's going to be doing it in an upright position. What this does is it puts his weight into a, a distribution pattern of about 70% on the rear end and only 30% on the front end. However, if you notice, Scott, go ahead and, and, and pedal and show us the, the actual clearance you have right now uh, on that frame. As you can see, he's got plenty of room in there between his knees. This frame fits Scott right. However, if this frame was too small for Scott and the, the top tube was too long, it's going to make Scott bend over and reach out. So, he, so he's putting the wrong amount of weight on the front wheel if he's in the, on the wrong size bike. That's right. It's going gonna, it's gonna to totally destroy his performance, Lenny, because he's now going to have too much weight in the front end. He's going to be losing traction. He's going to be crashing and falling down. Is frame size the only important fit that we should know about for a BMX bike? No, there, there, Lenny, there, there probably is two more uh, things that we should be considering. The first one would be stem. Stem is, is a device that's used to hold uh, the handlebar onto the frame. And here you see I have three different sizes from DK. The difference in the three is the space at which it extends the handlebar out from the frame. Well, we have frames and stems. Is there anything else? Yes. Handlebars is, is our other component, as you can see. Handlebars are basically constructed from two different types of metal. Alloy for the lighter, smaller riders, and chromoly, as denoted in the white bars here, for the uh, larger uh, riders as they get up in, in age and weight. Well, with all these sizes and things, what's a good rule of thumb when you're sizing handlebars and stems and frames? Well, as you notice, the handlebars in width, and as you can see, the, it's a progression up, should basically, the, a rider should be able to reach out and hold those handlebars comfortably as Scott is doing. Secondly, you can see that the handlebars rise in height. And if you take uh, Scott, for instance, and he moves up here to his handlebars, when he's standing in a position like this, the handlebar, if sized correctly as far as, as the elevation of the bar, will fall anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches below his belly button. This will allow Scott or any other rider the maximum amount of lift as he is cranking to transfer the most amount of power back to that rear wheel. Thanks a lot, Bob. Scott, why don't we check with our BMX pro, Stu Thompson, on some of his tips for BMX equipment. My first tip 
ask to ride as many bikes as you can. My second tip, ask questions and get advice from some of the other riders and parents at the track. My third tip, don't spend too much money on unnecessary items for your bike. Every BMX rider needs to learn how to jump. We'll show you the proper techniques on double jumps. Let's see a couple riders in action. Notice how one of the riders lands on the back side of the jump and the other lands on the face. It's very important that a rider clear the distance of the two jumps and land with his back wheel on the back side of the jump. Let's see a rider do it the right way. Notice how the back wheel clears the jump and picks up speed on landing. It's very important that a rider not land in this area here, short of the top. Let's see a rider do it the wrong way. Notice how when you land short, it slows you down. Let's see the proper way to take those again. Now let's talk about speed jumping. When you pedal over an obstacle, leaving the back wheel on the ground at all times. Let's see a rider in action. The proper way to take a speed jump is to lift the front wheel before the obstacle, pedal over the entire obstacle, leaving the back wheel on the ground at all times. Let's see a rider in action. Now let's see some fun jumps, jumps that shouldn't be done during racing because there is a chance of falling down and getting hurt. First is a tabletop, and now a one-footer, and a kick-out. Some great trackside tips, but on the tracks not always where BMX races are won. It takes special exercises. That's why we have Titan Factory Professional Richard Fleming, along with Titan Factory Amateur Scott Furry, to show some of the younger riders better exercises that they can do at home. Also with Richard, we'll have Stu out here showing the older riders some weightlifting techniques. Let's go to the weight room. One of the most exciting new exercises is plyometrics. Plyometrics is an exercise that increases your reaction time. In other words, when you're out there on that BMX track and you see an opening, your muscles need to react as fast as possible to get through that opening before it closes. And plyometrics can help you get your muscles in shape and ready to react. Scott will demonstrate a few of these exercises. First is the toe jumps. Toe jumps were designed to strengthen your calves. 
Without bending your knees or using your arms or body, flex your calf muscles explosively and push off the ground using only your toes. See how high you can get. Do 15 repetitions, rest, then do 15 more. And next are bench jumps. Place two sturdy benches on either side of you. Jump vertically onto the two benches and drop down between them as quickly as possible. This exercise improves vertical speed, a skill important in BMX racing. And now, try the zigzag. Jump over a bench while performing a half twist in the air. Your biggest problem will be a balanced landing so you can jump again in the other direction. This will increase both explosive power and body control. The final plyometric exercise is the depth jump. This is considered to be the ultimate plyometric exercise. Step off a low height and immediately after landing, jump up. Repeat 8 to 10 times for 2 to 3 sets. In addition to plyometrics, you may want to try rollers. Rollers are excellent for balance and coordination, especially in the winter months when you can't ride outside. Training should consist of speed riding, pedaling very fast for 30 second sprints, and medium pace pedaling for about 30 minutes duration. You may want to practice while watching your favorite TV show. Good luck with your workouts. Now let's show you some free weight exercises for you riders 14 years and up. Remember, let's not strain ourselves. Start with light weights and slowly build up. Let's start with the bench press. Let's keep our heads down, our backs flat, and with the medium grip, hold on to the bar in a controlled manner, lower it to your chest. Exhale and press the bar up into the starting position. This helps build upper body strength. Next would be the thigh extension. While sitting on the thigh extension machine with the knees touching the back of the bench, inhale and raise the bar parallel. While exhaling, return into a normal position. This helps work on leg strength for good gait starts. Next is the thigh curl. Lying down, face down on the bench with the pad at the back of your ankles, curl your legs up so that your upper and lower legs come together. Exhale and return to the starting position. This is the one arm row. Bending over with one hand on the bench using a palms in grip, inhale and lift the weight to the side of your chest. Exhale as you return to the bottom. This exercise is good for working the back muscles for those strong gait starts. And finally, reverse curls. Hold the bar with a palms down grip. While inhaling, curl up to your shoulders. Now exhale as you return to start. This is good for grip strength. I hope these tips will increase your BMX performance. equipment with Titan representative Bob Furry. Bob, tell us about some of the smaller parts on a BMX bike. Well, I think the first thing we probably should look at would be the uh, crank arms. And basically we're, we're, we're looking at two different types of crank arms. First, our one-piece crank arm, and the second type of crank arm would be a three-piece crank arm, which we have here showing a spindle and then two, two crank arms that can be removed. 
Well, if I was going to upgrade my BMX bike, which one would I take? More than likely, Lenny, you'd select a three-piece crank arm. The reason you do that is, A, it either comes in alloy or in a chrome molly situation like this. The reason you have this is because it also comes in in different crank arm lengths. Different crank lengths? How do I know which one's best for me? You don't. It, it's, it's hard just to say, well, this is a, the, the crank length for you. Because of the different lengths, we've prepared a chart that takes into consideration of the, the length of the rider's leg and the length of the cranks that are available. You'll notice that if you had, uh, have a, a, an inseam leg length of uh, 16 to 22 inches, that you would go over and it would show that you would be running a uh, 150 to 155 millimeter crank, Lenny. Sounds good, Bob. I guess we're cranking right along. Are there any other components that are important on a BMX bike? Sure. If, if you notice, I brought some other items here. Uh, one would be seats. This is a seat that features a chrome molly seat post and a nylon plastic type of a seat. Bigger riders are going to use this because they have the ability to change the angles of the seat to fit their bike and everything else as they grow larger. The other style of seat is the lightweight uni seats that are designed for younger riders. The uniqueness of these is the fact that they are one piece, again for lightness. Sounds good, Bob. I guess I've got a grip on seats. <laughs> Speaking of grips, grips is another area that uh, you know, our riders should be concerned about. Not from a, a tearing factor, because anytime you fall, you're liable to just damage your grips. But the thing that you want to be concerned about is the fact that these grips happen to be different in length and in diameter. The smaller grip is designed for the younger rider, and the larger grip, of course, is for the larger rider. It gives them a good grip on things. Wow, so far, I'm already a better peddler. <laughs> Peddlers, pedaling. Pedals are probably one of the items that really take a lot of abuse in your bike. You're going to be going down on them a lot. One of the that you should be looking for in adding pedals to the, your component list of your, for your bicycle is the actual size of the surface of the pedal. A larger surface is going to give your foot a better position for pedaling. But you're going to be wearing them out, so in the, the, the pedals you want to also make sure that you have uh, cages that you can buy. And this company here, this Urchin, makes an excellent replacement cage, so as you start to wear your pedals out, you can replace them with the Urchin cages, giving a good, sharp pedaling surface again. We're doing pretty good, Bob. Why don't we look at BMX hubs now? What kind of hub is this? That's a good example, Lenny, of a uh, alloy loose ball hub. Hmm, kind of standard. Is there any others? Sure there is. If you'll notice here, I said loose ball. The others type of a hub that a lot of people use is a seal bearing hub. The reason they like to use a seal bearing hub is because ease of maintenance and it still rolls very smooth and very free. Additionally, uh, I have the ability to go ahead and put a smaller type of freewheel onto here. This happens to be a 15, I can also use a uh, 14, and it simply screws on. However, if in my selection of gear ratios, I wanted to put a different size on here. This hub is what is known as a flip-flop, and I can merely flip it over and make another gear selection and put it onto this size of a hub. Sounds like a lot of gear selections, Bob. Is there any way I can tell which gearing's best for me? There is. All you need to do is be able to understand how you figure your gear ratios. Once you understand how to figure your gear ratios, then you can go ahead and make that applicable to the actual track racing conditions and the other. And we prepared a chart to explain first how to figure the gear ratios and then how you use those on the actual track. Let's take a look at that. You need to be able to measure the diameter of your wheel, take that figure in inches, multiply it by the number of uh, teeth in the front of your chain ring that you're using, Turn around and then divide that figure by the number of teeth in your rear freewheel. And that is then your gear ratio that you're running on your BMX bike. Sounds pretty good, Bob. Now that I know how to figure my gear ratio, how should I use it? Good question, because a lot of people you know, know their gear ratios, but again, you've got to be able to apply that to the track conditions you're under to be able to then maximize the performance of your racer uh, so that that person can win. And again, if you look at the chart, you'll notice that we've applied the ratios that we've figured out into three different types of uh, track conditions, whether it be a short track, a long track, or uh, uh, whatever the situation. We've covered just about everything. I see you saved the wheels for last. Yes, I did. The reason we saved, I think, the wheels for last was due to the fact that we started out with a very important uh, part of our equipment section, and that was sizing the frame properly to the rider. All right, size of frame, I think the 
wheel is the second most important thing in a bicycle and we have a number of wheels and let me start off and go through and ex explain the importance of each this wheel here happens to be a sew up a 20 inch sew up what's a sew up what's what's a sew up is where you actually have an inner tube and a tire all into one and it's not the usual configuration it makes the wheel much lighter and it's therefore it's used on our smaller riders uh, for performance great what's next <clears throat> Next, we have a uh, 20 by 1 and an eighth wheel. And it's the next size up. As the rider starts to increase in size, we're going to increase in the wheel size as well. We're still going to keep the diameter or the width of the, the wheel small. That allows us less rolling resistance and allows them to accelerate quickly, but we're still keeping in a lightweight wheel. If you also notice, this is a wheel that was built by DM Racing and it fe you features a unique spoke pattern. Yeah, I see the spokes are straight on this side and they're kind of crisscrossed on this side. That's correct. The reason was done for strength and uh, to create a light wheel at the same time. Mm, sounds like the little kids got their wheels in shape. What's well, up next? If you notice this one here, this happens to be now for our middle size to uh, our pro size rider like Stu rides. And it is what is considered a 20 by one and a half because of, again, the tire width. And the tire width increases as our rider size increases. So you mean 20 inch this way and about an inch and a half this way? That's right. Also, another common size that riders use is a 175, which, again, is the, the one and a three quarter inch width instead of one and a half. Oh, I see. So I just size it up that way. What are these bigger wheels you have over here for us, Bob? The bigger wheels we have here are our cruiser wheels. If you remember in our first section, we talked in terms of uh, the cruiser wheel that was a 24 inch in diameter. Well, you don't have to be a large racer to run cruisers. Many younger riders in the uh, nine and up age run cruiser wheels. And this happens to be, again, a small cruiser wheel that they use. I see it spoke with the, the straight pattern on this one. Another DM racing wheel. If you notice, this happens to be the front wheel, so they, they radial laced both sides. And radial lace means drawing the spoke from the hub out to the rim in a, in a straight pattern without any cross. It also, again, as you can see, the narrow profile of the, of the wheel uh, for less rolling resistance, quicker acceleration due to the lightweightness of the uh, rider. The littler guys are on the thinner tires then? That's right. And when we get to our larger cruiser racers, they again run a 24-inch wheel, which is basically the same size as that. The difference, again, being the cross-section of the tire. With their larger size, That's, we go, That's correct. We then go ahead and, and run a, a larger diameter. And that basically is your five different uh, wheel sizes that uh, a rider is able to, to race with. Thanks a lot, Bob. It's been great talking to you. Bob Furry from Titan Bikes. Why don't we check out Stu Thompson now, our BMX pro, and see if he has any final tips on BMX parts. Tip one, stay with proven components. Tip two, clean your accessories regularly. And last, keep good tires on your bike, because that means good traction. This is an important part about racing, walking the track. In walking the track, you can learn about things that you don't normally see while practicing yourself. You can watch other riders take jumps, take turns, see what their lines are going to be. This is an important thing about race strategy. Let's look first at cornering strategy. This is a slingshot pass. Watch the rider in yellow go high on the berm and pass the lead rider on the inside. Let's see a diagram of the slingshot pass. This is the lead rider coming into the corner. As the yellow rider comes up high, he will pass the lead rider at this point and become the inside rider going into the next turn. Let's take another look at that. Let's take a look at another cornering strategy, block pass. This is where you will try to pass the lead rider on the inside. Let's see this in action. Watch the rider in yellow. Take a look at a diagram of the block pass. This is the lead rider. Position yourself on the inside coming through the turn. 
passing him on the inside and taking over his line. Let's see that again in slow motion. Notice how the rider in yellow stays on the inside of the lead rider, forcing him on the outside of the turn and overtaking him coming out. In this program, we've seen techniques on gates, jumps, and basic racing strategy. Now let's look at a summary of the key racing tips. Tip number one, always wear your helmet and proper safety gear. Tip two, start with a review of what you've learned from the previous day's riding. And last, practice daily, especially those starts. Many people don't think BMX racing requires fuel because it's done on a bicycle. But it's your body that's the engine and it requires proper fuel just like any car racing engine. That's why we have an expert here with us, Mindy Abramson from Robinson Racing. She's the director of operations and going to tell us a little bit about the proper foods to put in our bodies. Mindy, tell us about foods. Well, there are definite do's and don'ts. Some of the don'ts might be junk food. Stay away from junk food. Before the race, during the race, during the entire race season. Fried foods. Don't let your body get concentrated with oil. Let it be concentrating on putting out energy. Stay away from sweets. Candies, cookies, cakes. Don't they have sugar in them and isn't sugar a, a higher energy food? Yes. There are natural sugars and packed manufactured sugars. If you see it in a package, put it back on the shelf. Do yourself a favor. Salt. Stay away from salt. Don't munch out on corn chips, potato chips, things of that nature. Try to stay away from soda as best as possible. Water is a great alternative. Well, those are a lot of examples. I'm sure a lot of BMXers out there are making these mistakes. Let's go trackside and see if we can catch them in the act. But I'm eating it anyway. Yes, I do. Looks like we caught a few of them, Mindy. Well, now that they know what not to eat, let's tell them some of the better foods to eat. When you eat, how you eat, and what you eat are equally as important. Some of the things you want to try to stick to are eating well-balanced meals during the entire season. As you approach the race day, you want to curb your meals a little bit. You want to substitute your steak for maybe a potato. You want to scratch the red meat and go into the starches and the high carbohydrates, such as spaghetti. An alternative to maybe a steak would be a nice lean piece of chicken or veal. Mm, you said spaghetti. What about a pizza? That's awful fun. I'm sure a lot of the kids out there can relate to that. Well, a pizza's okay. It's certainly better than a nice lamb chop. 
on the race day itself, don't load yourself down with anything heavy. Frequent light snacking is very, very beneficial. Hmm. Well, I wonder if uh, maybe some of the top factory stars are doing what you just recommended. Why don't we go out to the track and see what they're doing? Looking for dinner last night, I had linguine and clam sauce. For dinner last night, I had pizza. Last night for dinner, I had uh, spaghetti and a big salad bar. No red, no red meats. No red meats. No Chicken red meats because only. it stays in your body for about eight or nine hours, and your body's digesting it, taking up all your energy doing that instead. What'd you, what'd you have for breakfast? Fruit is in your body. Fruit is pure energy in 20 minutes. All right. During the day, I try to eat light. Try to eat bread. Try to eat drinks, mostly fluid. You know, not Coke, Pepsi, and that junk. Just try to drink water, or Gatorade, or something with carbohydrate. I just stick to like fruits, like natural stuff, bananas, apples, oranges, uh, water, things like that. Looks like some of the better riders are doing just what you say, Mindy. Any few further comments to tell these riders out there? Yeah, absolutely. Certain foods you want to have around the pit area that are easily accessible are fresh fruits. Remember when I was specifically pointing out natural sugars versus packaged sugars? A fresh fruit, beautiful banana, nice yellow package, something delicious or dried fruits, natural sugar again, raisins, whole wheat bread, delicious loaf, throw it in the car, goes anywhere. Water versus soda, always water comes out on top. Energy drinks are popular in any sport. They're fine as long as they're diluted more than the average direction will tell you to. Diluted, uh, is that uh, like putting water in with them? If you have a bottle of an energy drink, Make it two bottles. Smart economics. I'm sure moms and dads can get into that. Well, it's also smart for the body it's going into. Any of these foods can be put up, picked up at your average corner store. Mm, sounds great, Mindy. Thanks for coming out. Riders, listen to what she said and go out and do the best you can with the proper tools. Our last equipment feature is on safety. Safety is something that should be on every BMXer's mind. So let's start with the BMX racing uniform. The uniform usually consists of a long sleeve jersey with a mesh type material and padded elbows for overall protection. The BMX pants are made out of nylon material for easy sliding on the dirt surfaces. They feature a padded hip, a padded knee, a padded shin for overall leg protection and the uniform also includes BMX racing gloves with padded palms for hand protection throughout the day from cuts and abrasions. If I could have Richard Fleming, our pro out here, to show us this uniform. Richard, you're looking good. You're all dressed up. You've got the elbows padded, the hips, the knees, the shins. You've even got the gloves on. Why don't we get Stu Thompson out here and kind of help us demonstrate the BMX uniform. Rich, you ready to go with this demonstration? I'm ready. Let him have it, Stu. Oh, what a great demonstration. Things going well, Richard? Yeah, we're doing okay. How are the elbows? Well, they're fine. The knees? Good. Okay, those are some of the important reasons you should wear. A... Oh, the gloves. I forgot the gloves. The overall part of the BMX uniform. Hands doing good? Yeah, they're okay. Great, Richard. Okay, let's look at the most important safety feature in BMX, the helmet. We have two of the two models of BMX helmets here. The full face, which protects the mouth 
in extreme measures, protects the full skull area and the open face, which is, has no mouth protection built in, but has a lot more visibility and a lot more breathing. Richard, got your helmet on, you're ready to go. Why don't we have Stu Thompson come back out here and kind of help demonstrate the safety features of the BMX helmet. Are you ready to go, Richard? I'm ready. He's ready, Stu. <laughs> Richard, 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 are you okay? I'm okay. Lucky you were wearing your BMX helmet. Now kids, don't try this at home. It was just a demonstration. Let's look at one other piece of BMX safety equipment, the goggles. Richard, if I could have you put these on for me. Uh, See, okay. the goggles protect your eyes from dirt, dust, even pebbles or rocks that may fly up on a BMX track. Now, if I could have Stu Thompson come back here and kind of help you and I demonstrate the BMX goggles. Are you ready to go with this demonstration, Richard? I'm ready. He's ready, Stu. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, man. What a great demonstration, Richard. How you doing? How are the eyes behind those goggles? Okay. <laughs> They're looking good to us, Richard. <laughs> Another great demonstration. Richard and his uniform have held up to everything we've thrown at him. Let's give him one final test. If we could have Stu bring out the bike. The BMX bike features three safety areas the frame pad on top of the bars, the stem pad, and the bicycle frame pad. And this pad is very important. Should you be pedaling, straddling the bike, going your hardest, and fall right on top of it, this could be extremely painful. Stuart, I wonder if Richard's ready for the, the frame, frame pad, pad test. test. That's it. Richard's been a good sport. And kids, you be good sports too. And remember, always use your safety gear. BMX sure is a great sport. Along the way, growing out of BMX is a sport called freestyle. Why don't we take a look at the GT freestyle team in action.
at the finish line of this video. We hope you've learned a lot about BMX, about what it is, how you can become involved with it, and how you can have fun with it. Along the way, we've had a lot of help. I think we need to go back to the track and thank those racers for their support. Tooney, Turnell Henry. Greg, Mr. Awesome Hill. Kevin, Sheepdog Hull. Travis, Chiprez. Richard, the Flamingo Fleming. Glenn, the Fall Guy Pavlovsky. Jeff, Mr. Smooth Donnell. And Russ, the Kid LeBaron. Quite a list of today's top stars. I'm sure these racers, much like you kids watching this video, started out as people who liked bikes and wanted to become winners. Stu, in closing, what would you say to the future BMXers out there? Well, it's hard work getting to the top. When I first started, I was unsponsored for a while, but I kept at it. BMX has taken me a long way. I just recently opened a bicycle store. Bicycle stores are a good way to get the knowledge of BMX. Ask as many questions as possible. Best of all, we want you to go out and enjoy BMX and have fun. Thanks, Stu. We want you to go out and race BMX and get totally awesome. If you'd like to race BMX in your area, riders east of the Mississippi River should contact the National Bicycle League, P.O. Box 729, Dublin, Ohio. 43017 or call them at area code 614-766-1625. Riders west of the Mississippi River should contact the American Bicycle Association, P.O. Box 718, Chandler, Arizona, 85244, or call them at area code 602-961-1903. BMX race footage was from the U.S. Nationals in Bakersfield, California. Special segments filmed at the Inland Empire BMX of Orange County, California. <laughs>